Okay, thank you very much for coming to this exhibition, this inclusive excellence series number four that I've had the privilege of being able to participate in and uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed the uh, preparation and then seeing what other artists have brought to the table, so to speak. And uh, so for my proposal, I came up with the idea of vibration in art, in painting. And that came about as I was looking in my own gallery at the work that I had on the wall. And as it became very obvious to me that there was a lot of movement in the paintings and whether it was the, um, the colour combinations that I was using or uh, the emotion, the movement in that, but it was, there was an element of that in every one of the paintings. So we're just standing in front of one of the works and uh, I had already painted this, uh, a mar much larger section of this scene and was very sad to see it go, even though I believe paintings are meant to go where they are, um, whoever takes them on in their home. Using a photo reference, but just pushing the boundaries so that it became more a semi-abstract piece rather than too representational. So uh, my background is more representational. So for me to come out of that comfort zone is really important if I want to progress as an artist. Um, I have the passion and most artists would agree that um, because we have that passion, we are called to do something about it and um, we notice things that other people don't notice. We notice someone walking along the street and just their, their manner. Um, we pick up on people's emotions. Our senses are so heightened that we can bring that to our paintings. And uh, that is our role, to move people with our artwork. Well, um, if we look at this next piece, of the Bustleton Jetty and uh, again it's the experience of walking down there and looking at what was in front of me and thinking I have got to say this, I have got to put this on canvas and um, for, for this image that I was there for uh, I started to see a whole lot of symbolism too. And I thought, well, this, this could be um, the people of the community, the, the strength of the beams um, <coughs> represent the, the pillars of, in society or the people who make a difference. And going through uh, to the other side is, um, you know, our intention and our goals. And uh, look, there's, there's a lot in there and um, you can interpret what you, what you will. But uh, it's called um, Timeless Passage. So it goes across time and generations. And even just looking at the visual aspects of this, the texture and this red, uh, just lifting it up too. Um, you don't need to know what it is, but it gives strength in the composition. Um, then on to this piece here. Uh, not only do I go to this place and I appreciate our local beach. Um, I, I had to paint it and on this cloudy, stormy day, I was just given so much, so much visual aspects to put into a painting. But it doesn't just happen, so it's just this process that you have to go with and trust that it will get you there in the end. 
So it may have started off with a grey background uh, or a bit of a wash where it's rusty, but um, just looking at the reflections in the water, the linear markings that perhaps have come from the wind that shape all those lines and playing with colour, just adding the aqua, where has that come from? There's just a hint of it through there and you need to bring it around the painting as well. You want the viewer to keep moving around the painting so an artist has to think about the uh, the tools that they're going to use to engage with the viewer. And then we have another jetty, the Esperance jetty. And I think, well, artists do get um, ideas from other artists. And I may have seen just some ad in a, a glossy magazine and must have been just something that gave me a start and I thought, right, I'm going to get a big um, house painting wall roller and uh, dip it in this, this black paint or Payne's grey and allow it to zigzag just the way um, the poles were of the, of the jetty. And you can see this broken colour that's fine. That's an accidental um, uh, response to using this tool. And uh, then I continued on adding colour to uh, the reflection and the water. So the blues uh, came through nice and strongly with a little bit of the leftover black. And um, may look, I may have even started off with this as a wash because this is underneath. So it's all those layers that build up and eventually you then do the little accents of the figure. And then the final icing on the cake was this house paint that is just so fluid. And um, I probably just used a kitchen knife and just let it drip and uh, you know the giggling and the, the satisfaction that came from taking that punt of well how do I say this how do I say that it's dancing because I can see it um, so I probably didn't know I was going to do that until it came to that stage to have this all just unfinished I thought was uh, um, modern, contemporary. So, shall we move to the next? Yeah. So, a little bit of bush now. And I look at this piece here, and I remember what it was as an acrylic. And it was soft, and it was done on site. And I selected a palette, so I had all my shades of greens and some rusty colours and put those down. And really the, the trees are just the symbol of, of trees in the bush, but they, they ground everything. Otherwise, if you took away those marks, it would be just totally abstract. Uh, down at Yelling Up, you may know this little spot if you're standing up high looking down and it's just as the sand curves, uh, the shore curves around, but what it gave was the drama in the water, the contrast of the dark blues against the breaking of the wave and um, semi-transparent water through the edges of the, um, the sandbank. And this could be done with just uh, blues. It could be just like the piece that I've just shown you, uh, a section of the sea, of yelling up, of the sand and the, the sky and, and the, the water. But this, to me, um, if it was turned horizontally, panoramic, it'd be like the cross-section of the trunk of a tree. 
and really the textures, that's what I was trying to convey, uh, the textures coming through that you see of the peeling bark on the tree. So with this particular workshop, we were told to have a, um, a flat piece of surface. So this was just not um, a canvas on a panel or a stretch canvas, it was just a piece of canvas. And uh, blobs of paint were put, positioned, and then your spatulas of whichever width were just used to smooth out the paint. And I had no intention, so I just let it unfold. And for some reason, afterwards, when I was adding some more elements, I could just see this figure. And I thought, well, that's the shadow in the mist. It has some boats in it, but I couldn't bring myself to do that to this. I thought, there's just too much to try and look at. Why the other piece could take it, I don't know. But uh, this one, I thought, there's enough activity and busyness in here that it's finished the way it is. Parakeet Bay. Uh, I am fascinated with the water and what's underneath the water, especially when it's crystal clear. And uh, again, it is, even though it's crystal clear, it's it, what the textures underneath are all fairly blurred. So that you don't have to say absolutely everything. You can just give that impression. Um, but all this foam that's at the front, uh, how do you say it? So it's less obvious here, a little squiggle there, um, taking back so much of what was there initially. And I might even visit it again. <laughs> Who knows? I might decide this is still too busy but at the moment I'm settling okay with it. A little bit lighter, this apricot colour mixed in with the cream, and so gradually it's just changing as it goes through to the shadows. And then the marks that are here, what lines do I have and keep and what do I let go? Because they're, they're really directing you into this um, piece, but I still love the lines for what they are. And um, uh, also this just adds another little bit of, of movement. It could, could have been windy and sunny, who knows. Thank you everyone for coming to listen. Uh, I just thought of something else. Uh, if you, you like the work that you see and you want to learn from me, I am running some intensive three-day workshops in November for adults. And uh, I would love to help you on your art journey. They're three days and we go out into the field and uh, you can see the details on the website. I also have some lovely little books, as you can see here. Lots and lots of paintings. You can see those on the website as well, and they're available for purchase.